Right, what I quickly want to uh, go over now is what happens when your computer doesn't boot um, OS X. And here we have a lovely, scary, instant kernel panic. Now, there's a few things that I can derive through common sense with an instant kernel panic, and that's um, nothing uh, nothing high-level operating system-wise uh, that's going to be loaded um, towards the end of the loading cycle is even relevant at this stage. It's, it's things that the computer initializes immediately. So if I were to be presented with this screen, which I probably have many times in my playing about on the search for uh, uh, getting things to work correctly, I would automatically assume that it falls into probably one of four categories. Um, the first is CPU incompatibility. Um, so it could be that I'm using a very strange CPU that's not on um, any kind of compatibility list for OS X. Um, obviously that would include all AMD chips, um, but it could also include some very obscure mobile iterations of an in Intel chip. But since I only use, I've, I've actually got um, two MacBook Pros, so I'm not entirely fussed with... Uh, um, setting up any of my Windows based laptops with OS X. Um, the second thing is BIOS settings. So I'm using a gigabyte board here but there are very specific BIOS settings that OS X will actually need. Um, the common ones are the S3 power state. The other, the other two things um, which are pretty important um, and you can find these on uh, TonyMacX86.com uh, the HPET setting which sounds really childish and freaky but it's actually better than saying high precision event timer it's also important to set the disk operation mode or the disk controller mode to AHCI instead of IDE so if you actually do get your li uh, your uh, hard disks showing up on the first boot screen which your BIOS shows you, which is the ID disk list or ID device list, then you haven't got it set. And not having this set can cause uh, not necessarily an instant kernel panic, but cause problems in load whereby it can't find the file system, or if it does, it may be... be could be prone to corrupt it or have read errors. Um, the other thing that could cause this is a graphics card initialization problem. So uh, off the top of my head, um, I know that I would get this if uh, Chimera or Chameleon or Chameleon. For some reason I love saying Chameleon. Um, if they were to inject an incorrect ID um, or if I was using any kind of specialist injection or indeed I had two cards but something like the graphics enabler yes string set in one of my boot files I would get an instant kernel panic like this um, because basically it's, yeah, it, it's actually getting addresses and initialization wrong for you know something that's very fundamental like the display even though a graphics card will fire up in VGA mode it's still prone to kill your machine if it's got the incorrect address um, so that kind of ties in with this with the last um, thing that I would automatically assume um, or certainly the top four and the last is DSDT problem so if I've downloaded an incorrect DSDT um, that's not for my motherboard I would get an instant kernel panic like this because of address problems or it could be that I'm not using the right revision of um, DSDT for my BIOS revision in other words the two don't match it could be that I have um, BIOS version F8 but I'm actually using the DSDT revision for F6 
the difference there is a manufacturer is quite open to change internal addressing on the components to the motherboard through a BIOS update. Um, so that could be um, an issue. Then we have later stage problems um, in kernel panics. Um, and then there's, as an example, we'll look at this one and imagine that it happened a little bit later on. Um, if we look at the important things about this kernel panic, um, we, we know it's a kernel panic um, primarily because it's got an uptime in nanoseconds at the bottom. In other words, at that point, the OS decided that it's really not going to continue loading anything because of a catastrophic dependency failure in loading some component. But that's from the last line. Further up, it actually has what we call a backtrace. And that backtrace is actually, it's, it's not brilliant in OS X, but it's not, it's not the worst. Um, the blue screen of death with random numbers comes to mind, which is absolutely terrible and giving you just a one module name in Windows, whereas a Unix-based system or a BSD-based system like OS X does provide us with a lot more information than that. It tells us what it was loading and the dependencies for what it was loading. Now, it doesn't automatically indicate uh, or tell us that your system stopped loading because of X, but it does give us a ground start point. And I can see on this instant kernel panic that there are a lot of I.O. or input-output. Um, there's actually three on this instant one, but it could be that if uh, something failed later on that was a primary board component that was required, um, I could have a lot of these I.O. Um, kernel extensions being dumped in the backtrace. Um, and it is, it's an important starting point to be able to search for solutions is to, to know and diagnose why your machine stopped. Even if you haven't got a clue how to fix it, it's an important starting point. The, uh, the next thing that we're going to look at is an absolutely brilliant favorite of mine, um, especially on the Tony Mac forums and in the chat channel, is my computer... Um, stopped loading, it stuck at the Apple logo and the spinny wheel. Uh, has anybody got a solution? Now, I could actually feel my temperature rise just saying that to myself. Because what you're actually asking there is, let's, let's put it in a context. I need to take my car to the garage. But instead of taking it to the garage, what I do is I ring up the garage and I say, I've got a problem with my car, it's blue. And that's all the information I give. Um, I think I get quite a comical response from any mechanic that was going to look at my car. Um, as is the case if you kind of get into the habit of posting simplistic things or asking simplistic questions that bear no relevance to the problem whatsoever. So it's important that we learn how to get the correct information so that we have the ability to look up information or others can help us because they're well informed. And the way that we do this is we look at the bootloader and we have a look at the various different options for how we can get the bootloader and the boot operation in OS X to show us more information.